Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Okay, still in Copenhagen, enjoying a beautiful, cold, winter, sunny day in beautiful, beautiful Copenhagen. What? That could have been a Trump speech right there. You're welcome. Ah. Keep America great. Keep them, or it will make Keep, make it great again. Make it great again, because you know at one point because it, it wasn't great, great before. It wasn't. It no, wasn't. It was you know, actually terrible before. It was, Believe me, huge failure. Yeah, it was an abysmal failure. Exactly. Thank God we've I've got, been there. We've I've got been there. our overlord Trump in place now to <laughs> secure our futures. Fuck uh, that guy. <sighs> anyway, we're at Fermentoren, established in 2012. And uh, this place is amazing place. <laughs> one of our favorite bars. It's huge. It's huge, huge. Twenty-four taps to choose from. Um, but again, just one of our favorite places to come to. I know we, we say that about the like every place we go to, but but every place we go to has beer, so it's got to be the favorite place we go to. Pretty much. But this place in particular is kind of special because they aren't beholden to another brewery as such. It's not McKellar. It's not. Um, Bruce, which is too old, so it's not like a sponsored bar. It's kind of more, even though they're associated with a brewery, I don't feel they're beholden to the brewery, the brewery's no. name. No. So it's not, it's not a too old bar. It's not the McKellar bar. It's Fimitorin, and and therefore it frees them up to not just have, uh, you know. Uh, McKellar beer or two old beer on tap, it allows them to provide a wide variety of beers from different places and locations. Um, having said that, uh, the owner actually does dry and bitter. Is that correct? Yep, that's or, correct. So the owner, okay, so the, I wasn't sure if it was one of the owners or uh, it's one, of, or, one of the owners. Okay, yeah. one of the yeah. owners. Yeah, yeah. So it's one CERN, of the owners. CERN, uh, well, CERN and Jay actually does dry and bitter, I think. Okay, so they do dry yeah. and bitter, and dry and bitter is really, really good stuff. Um, I try to find some stuff uh, about them online, uh, but their website, all of their pages are coming soon. So, hey guys, get that shit done. <laughs> it doesn't take long to put text on a page. Take an hour, right after history, put it online. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, Fimitorin's really nice. It's like a small, cozy, uh, like a den kind of environment yeah. on the inside. But then outside, they've got this huge, amazing... Uh, two-tiered space uh, where they just put tons and tons of tables out during the uh, during the winter the or during months. the summer. Um, yeah, <laughs> during the summer. And um, so we're sitting outside in their permanent uh, seating area, and they've got heat yep. lamps, which is a kind of yep. a dominant feature in the yep. in Scandinavian market. So people can come outside and smoke and and, and do whatever. Um, but this is just a really fun. It's like your friendly neighborhood bar. It really is. And yeah. I always forget it's so close to War Pigs. It's only a block away. And I always yeah, it think, literally is one block away. Yeah, yeah, and I always think it's much further. So, and, and I kind of forget. And it's your perfect pit stop. Like, from, from having been to the Mikula Bar or War Pigs when you're heading over to uh, Kiosk, mm -hmm. go some cellar diving over there, then this is your perfect pit stop on the way. It really is. And they always have... I would say three or four like American, hard to get American beers. So it's not yeah. uncommon to find against the grain or Pipeworks or um, uh, Prairie Artisan yeah. or. Um, I mean, they had the Bow and Luke Imperial Stout yeah. a while ago. Oh, they had the Coffee so Oki. The Bow and Luke was so good, dude. You really I know, I never. Out. You I really missed out on I that know. one. Keep rubbing it in. I, I will. It was so funny because I'm just like, oh, that sounds good. I'll get one of those. And you're just like, you had Bo and Luke. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and you had no idea what it was. No, it wasn't until after I had it that I looked it up. I was like, oh, that was actually really a really good find. <laughs> um, it was really amazing. Um, but today we are trying uh, two different beers, of course. We have the Dank and Juicy from Dry and Bitter up first, which is a kind of a session-y IPA. It's 6.2% alcohol by volume. Uh, comes in at 3.81 out of uh, 1,077 um, reviews. Again, this just looks like beer. Copper, I mean, it's, golden. It's, it's a, it's, it's got a slight haze to it. Slight haze, yeah. But it's not, it's not a New England IPA. No. Uh, and not at least not in appearance. Nope. So uh, I'm excited to see what they're they're bringing to the table here. Yeah, it smells very IPA-ish, kind of citrusy. 
pop forward. Um, I mean, no real surprises here out of the glass. And we, we, we figured we wanted to try an, uh, one of the dry bitters because they've been doing some pretty good stuff. They're an up and comer, I think, in the market. Um, they're not really hitting the shelves real hard. Um, well, they're starting to pop up at uh, Sustainable quite a lot. Yeah. At least at the, um, the ones in the south, in Malmo. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can find them at uh, Hansa, at Hobo least. Hobo Chic and... Hobo Chic Double IPA, you can find that. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. I really it's enjoy that It's kind of their one. flagship. Yeah. I would and say you can that find the their Christian Bale Ale. Yeah. It's also really nice. Uh, so I'm excited about uh, something called Dank and Juicy. So let's see. Is this dank and or juicy? Right. Or none. Or none. All right. So cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Flat and earthy is kind of what I'm getting for here. <laughs> Come on. Regretfully, I'm going to have to agree. Yeah. It's so like I got kind of earthy on the nose as well. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to say it really does not live up to uh, the name Dank and Juicy. It is not dank, nor is it juicy. It is... Um, It's really earthy. Yeah. Um, there's not, I mean, I can kind of get the juiciness from it. Like it's kind of a, an unctuousness, uh, but it's really quick. Yeah. Like if you're not looking for it, you miss it, kind of. Yeah. And then the end, are, in the end is just that Danish bitters bisque kind of. It is really bitter. Yeah, kind of finished there. So for something juicy, you're thinking like rounded, fun, full bodied, yeah. like sweet. I mean, um, something like we tried over at uh, uh, Warpig's. Yeah. Um, a, like a New England couple, IPA, a while I, would, ago. I would describe it as kind of juicy. I mean, when you're thinking about Dank and Juicy, uh, since New England IPAs are like the embodiment of juicy IPAs, that's yeah. kind of what you're you're thinking about. I mean, even if it's not, even if it's not meant to be a New England IPA, I think it's 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 lacking a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to. Because I know they can do amazing IPAs. I mean, just looking at Hobo Cheek and the yeah, Hobo Cheek, Hobo, Christian Hobo Cheek is, is, is really, really good. And Christian Bale is also really, really good. I mean, good. Christian Bale is, of course, a, a, a pale ale. But, I mean, this, this I'm really sorry to say, but this, this does not live up to um, Dry and Bitter's usual standard. No, I, I think this is kind of a letdown. This is really extremely bitter. Like, this is almost... It's like aggressively bitter, and it yeah, doesn't give like, you the uh, hop aroma that you're wood, looking for. Wood bitter, kind yeah. of. You know, if you've ever had wood wood alcohol, uh, not wood grain alcohol, like... Uh, no, yeah. Uh, but something that's been aged on wood chips. Um, but just really raw, bitter, almost like a gamble dance kind of Danish uh, It's kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know if... if because I know it was released a while ago at Sustainable as well, mm -hmm. at the like uh, temporary releases, you know. Yeah. So I don't know if it's it's an old keg, maybe. Uh, could be. I, I feel like it should not. It should not taste like this. It's so aggressively bitter. I mean, it just... feels like. I mean, <laughs> like we tried the another IPA before that we know has dropped mm. the hops and the hop character. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me a little bit about that. So when I was in Belize, Belize does this thing where they take uh, wood chips and then you pour alcohol over it, and then the wood, uh, then the, uh, the alcohol absorbs the flavors of the wood chips, which comes out as this like aggressively dry, bitter, um, uh, dry and liqueur. bitter. And this is reminds me of that. It's extremely dry and it's extremely bitter. It's it's very. I guess I was a gamble dance. If you've ever had gamble dance, I know. And if you're in, of course I've had. Well, it. Scandinavian people do. I don't know outside of Scandinavia, you know what this that thing is, but it's like this this mouth dryingly bitter um, uh, drink. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and uh, actually believe that this is bad, past its prime. Yeah, uh, this might be an old keg. Uh, might be a faulty keg for what I know, but I mean, I I really don't think that this is what it was supposed to taste like. I kind of have to agree with you. I don't think that this is what they were intending it for it to be. No, and I I think it might have been like better before. Yeah, and maybe if we had tried it two weeks ago or a month ago, or a month ago, yeah, or when it was actually like fresh yeah. and just released. Uh, but at this point in time, it's it's not. 
it's not what I have come to expect from uh, Dry and Bitter. Yeah, for something called Dank and Juicy, this is almost like the 100% opposite of that. Yeah, It's exactly. like a, a 180 from that. Yeah, and that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. So. All right, I don't want to review it, but at the same time, I feel like we kind of have to. Um, uh, to be honest, I don't think we have to, because right. I do think there's either something wrong with the keg or something... It's either something's wrong with the keg or it's an old keg. So okay. I'm just not going to... So we're both going to abstain from reviewing yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. Out of fairness to the brewer yeah. and the quality that we know that they, they produce... Exactly. This is... Uh, something's off with this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and maybe we, we revisit it at another time when it's fresher. Or yeah. I, mean, I think we should uh, grab some of their other beers as well yeah. uh, during a different episode. And we'll uh, review those. Definitely. Because yeah. they, they pop up in Sweden quite often. So oh, they do. I mean, they're them. they're in the regular um, the regular inventory at Sustainable Lion in the south. So, Yeah. So aggressively bitter, I had to clean my palate with something. <laughs> You're going to level it. Yeah. That's so sweet now. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's super sweet. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. So All right, moving <clears> on. next up. Magic Rock, the big top. Uh, Magic Rock is a UK brewer, and they were established in mid 2011. And they have a then their goal is a full range of modern, flavorful, hop forward big beers. So they're going for extreme, like bam, in your face taste. Are you a spokesperson? I am not, but I just copy on the text they have on their website. <laughs> Because that's what they say they're going for, and that's the standard we're holding them to. Oh. Um, I've had several uh, Magic Rock beers. I assume oh, so you I. have as well. Oh, yeah. Um, they're quite easy to, to find. Well, not, I would say they're easy to find over here, but... But you can find they, it if you're ordering online. Like, uh, if you yeah, go yeah, to yeah. the BrewDog.com shop, there's always Magic Rock on there. Yeah. Uh, you can always find them at, um, well, uh, Kiosk and Old Batik in here yeah. in Copenhagen. You can always find them over there. Yeah. It's um, them and... Um, What's the other brewery that's really popular right now? Out of, From the UK? Yeah, not Cloudwater. Uh, Beavertown? Beavertown, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Magic Rock and Beavertown, you can kind of find... Regularly. S- regularly in Copenhagen. In Copenhagen, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I've, I've tried probably four or five of their beers, and I've really enjoyed uh, most yeah. of them. Um, I just had their... Um, the Cannonball Stout the other day. That's really nice. That's I a love good that. One. Rapture, and it's only like 6%. Really yeah, it's super drinkable. It's like a full-bodied, amazing stout at yeah. 6%. And yeah, so. Magic Rock does really good stuff. And I would say if you find them, definitely give them a try. You're yeah. probably going to like what they do. They even do a grapefruit IPA that I think is, is really nice. It's a high-wire grapefruit. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, really like, nice. I don't like grapefruit IPAs at all. No, but so, that one's really yeah, nice. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Um, so this is a red ale. Uh, yep. This is our first red ale. It's an imperial red ale. Uh, it is 7% like ABV. Classic English style. Yes, coming in at uh, 3.84%. Oh, sorry, 3.84% on wow, reviews. A 3.84 average 3. score 8, 4 on average untapped. Score. Thank you. For on my untapped. inebriated friend over here. At uh, 2,358 um, reviews. So, what are you expecting from a red ale? Well, what, what, was, what do you think? What was the... the uh, what was the... Uh, what was what was the, the I, I wrote down some notes about what I thought it would be. No, no, no. I mean, what 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 what, what, what's, what was the, uh, the 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 brewery um, Magic Rock? Yeah. Oh, I know it's Magic oh. Rock. But full what, range of modern, um, exactly. Full body, flavorful, uh, flavorful hop, forward, hop forward, big beers, big beers. That's right. what I'm expecting. <laughs> there you go. But what do you mean about red ales? Red ales are kind of a they kind of a maligned beer type. They've been around for a long time, like yep. like a brown ale. Not exactly an exciting style. They're kind of your workaday, older, yeah, British ale style. To be honest, I think it's it's actually quite hard to make a, a really good red ale. Yeah, why is that? Yeah, because I mean you have to get just getting the color right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean you're using a, um, a really really small amount of uh, like roasted malts, mm-hmm. which has really heavy influence on the color, but also impart a really like roasty like astringent bitterness. Okay. So you have to balance that out really well um, in your malt grist, basically. Okay. So it's it's actually really hard to make a, a good red ale. Well, this, this is really brown. pretty brown. I mean, <laughs> well, it's red. I mean, you definitely get, I mean, I get the reddish color. I mean, it's yeah. not like yeah. blood red, but it's, no, but I think it's, it's a brownish a, it's red. Also the the kind of muddiness to yeah. it makes it look kind of brown. 
Yeah. So. Yeah, this is not. I've it's seen not some clear. red hills that are extremely clear. Yeah. This one's very. Uh, it's very, very cloudy muddy. and muddy. Yeah. yeah. Cloudy is probably the better word. Oh, it smells really nice. It does. So, yeah. I mean, it's got a. To be honest, it smells like a barley wine. It does kind of like caramel yeah. Yeah. and um, hops and, and herbal yeah. flavors going on. Kind of reminds me of uh, Stone's Old Guardian barley wine yeah. a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I would definitely call this like a session barley wine. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah. I'd just say that. That's session, exact, that's exactly session barley is. wine would be a good way to describe Dude, this. There's, there's nothing red ale about this, in my opinion. So, it so, is all so, okay. barley wine. Well, then what makes it? What would make it a red ale? Like, what, what, How would you think of a red ale? Well, I think the problem here is that it's an imperial red ale. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you need like that. It, it's, it's, it's just never going to taste like a red ale. Because red ale is usually quite low ABV. Mm -hmm. And it's it like, usually like half the ABV of this. Oh, probably even less. Yeah, three point eight to four two, something like that. I was maybe like between three and four point five. Okay, that's just me off the top of my head. So I'm, I'm not gonna. So I'm not incorrect as well. Exactly. exactly. You <laughs> might be right. You might be more correct than me on this. I haven't done many red ales in my time, and I haven't read up on the style yeah. that much. But this definitely tastes like a session barley wine. Yeah. Yeah. No. This is. Was this a good eight? Uh, seven. Seven percent. Seven yeah. percent. Yeah, this is really nice. I mean, it's... But the good thing about it is that it's... Because it's, it's a barley wine that you can drink a lot of mm -hmm. without getting completely wasted. Yeah, barley wines usually come in at like 12 to 15 percent. Yeah, yeah, 10 to 13 at least. Somewhere in there. <laughs> they're, they're always high. I always know that. I guess the end, I'm just like, ugh. And then you need to age them for like a couple of years just so they mellow out a little bit so they calm the hell down. Uh, <laughs> But this is, you're right, this is, I would, when you say a session barley wine, that... That is what it is. That is exactly what it tastes like. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. No, definitely. It's That's, really, really nice. It's really good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get the the roastiness, you get the caramelness. Yep. Uh, it's complex, it's It's fun. quite hoppy. Yeah, it's very I mean, hoppy. It, it, it's actually quite hoppy. Mm. No, I would definitely say... A, a session version of Stone's Old Guardian is what this is. And that's not a bad thing. That is an excellent thing. Yeah, that is really, really good. Um, wow. I this is I, I have to tell you that between the two, I thought I was going to love the Dank and Juicy. Yeah, same here. And uh, the Red Ale, not my favorite style. Yeah. But, you know, we haven't done a Red Ale before, so I thought, fuck it, let's just try this. <laughs> um, why not? Uh, an Imperial, I'm like, okay, whatever. Sure, let's get crazy. <laughs> um, but uh, man, the Imperial Red Ale is so good. Yeah, I really blown away by this. I'm really impressed. And, and as you said before, easily excitable. <laughs> <laughs> so I was listening back to one of our past episodes, uh, the Double IPA Challenge episode, and, oh, you, yeah. and you were just like, "Well, you know, when you were raving about it in, in the U.S., you know, you're easily excitable." So I thought. <laughs> I thought, the, I thought the turkey citrus would be, you know, pretty good, but <laughs> that's, that's okay. funny. That's okay. Oh, uh, that's funny. It's uh, true, though. It is true. I, no, I am. I like things. If I like things, I'm like, ooh, yeah. Um, you get all giddy about it. I do. I do get giddy about it because you know when you find something new, it's like, wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna go. Uh, I don't know. Four point. I'm going to go four point two five. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yep. All right. So 4.25 for both of us on this one. This that is a total surprise. Concludes. Think, um, if we had to guess going into this, which one we would like better. Oh, shit. Neither one of us would have picked uh, the Red L. The Red L. Yeah. It just is not the... Um, not... The, uh, the winner that we thought it would be, but it is really, really good. Yep. Uh, I said, oh shit, because my phone's at 15% battery life, and I was like, oh no, what happened? I thought maybe we lost the recording. Oh shit! Because um, <laughs> that's never happened before. <laughs> no, no, not once. Um, <laughs> okay, so we'll wrap this up. Um, dry and bitter, we're going to give it another chance. We'll come back to it in another day yeah. and try another one. Because we, we know it's so much better than yeah, this. Yeah, we, so we know they do really good stuff. There's something wrong with this keg, yeah. probably. Um, Magic Rock, killing it once again, crushing it. 
with this session barley wine is what we're going to call it. Oh yeah, that's definitely what we're calling <laughs> it. This is what we're calling it. <laughs> well, we're even going to send them. We're going to when we close this episode, we'll call the session barley wine. See what oh, they yeah. say. Just um, for shits and games. Yeah, just for fun. All right. Um, all right. So check us out our episode online. at Fermentorin. Um, yep, yeah, this is our Fermentorin episode. We'll probably be back here again someday in uh, in the year. Uh, check us out online at what's on tap podcast dot com. Um, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Stitcher, iTunes. All the um, other places. Yep. Any, anywhere you think of it, we're probably there. Uh, Matias is on Grinder. You can find him at uh, uh, Brewski Swede. Um, uh, <laughs> otherwise, uh, have a good week, and we will uh, come back to you next week. Yeah. Later. <laughs>